Albert A. Walls, the voice of the jungle, broadcasting on the DVC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Hello and welcome home. Thank you for joining us on episode 212 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom. I'm here with Trevor and Damon. What's up, guys? What's up, hey. man? Hey. So I found the box that has all my stuff from my first Disney trip. Wait, from like your very first Disney <laughs> trip? Yes. Th- th- yes. This is the attic? You, you, yeah, what's in my attic? Stuff? It was funny. Okay. So yeah. I it, there's, there's a, a box of stuff, right? So it's 77, I think. 77, 78. I'm not necessarily 100% sure on the time frame. But it's funny. There's a bag from Disney with a bunch of stuff in it. And I pick up the bag and the bag just falls apart because like they're paper, right? <laughs> like it just like disintegrates. It's disintegrated in, in your hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's it's funny, like all the stuff from 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 back then. So that is funny. It's yeah, going to be on. Yeah, it's going to be on the next episode. I'm, I'm editing now. So I figure, I don't know, by the end of the month, right? I think I do one a month. So by the end of this month. Be curious to see how that uh, shakes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seems like a lot of the listeners uh, viewed your uh, viewed your video, so it seemed like it was doing pretty well, right? Yeah, I mean, hopefully this one does even better. I got a lot of feedback in terms of like what to do better, so we'll, we'll see how that all goes. All right, cool. Well, I got a new you, mic. You, you I got, got a I got, new mic? I got it. Well, no, I wish for the podcast. I wish <laughs> won't send me one. So no, well, I got a you. new mic for um. A uh, wireless um, lapel uh, lavalier. Okay. What, what are those lavalier. things called? Whatever those the things lavalier. are. Yeah. Yeah. So I got one of those. So we'll see how it works. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's that's good. So you got a mic and everything. You're like, you're like, well, yeah. I mean, I have a crap here. mic for to... the podcast still, but you know, you well, guys have nice ones. I well, don't have that's not true. You have a nice <laughs> mic. I, what are you talking about? I'll no, you, I'll... I don't. We had this discussion. I have a crap one. He, he I never like, got a $30 yeah. mic, dude. You wait, you still have the thirty dollar one that yes. from yes. when we started? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh my god. Okay. Well, I'll get you a new one then. We, That's what you said a, two two episodes ago. Just remind me. What are you turning into Derek? <laughs> Speaking of Derek. <laughs> Ooh, segue, right? <laughs> so yeah, so Derek was uh, supposed to join us today because uh D V C resale market has a has a big announcement that they wanted to make, and they wanted to make it first on our show, which is actually really exciting because they're announcing a new feature that doesn't they haven't even told people within the company about it yet. So they're announcing it first on this show to our listeners, which is very cool. Derek was supposed to join us today, but unfortunately had some scheduling That's issues. That's my fault. Yeah, it's That's always yeah. my fault. <laughs> it is. That was your fault. But Derek sent us someone better in return. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> so we have Danny with us. Uh, Danny is uh, never been on the podcast with us before. So welcome, Danny. Could you just uh, introduce yourself and tell us a, a little bit about your background and, and what you do at uh, DVC Resale Market? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I know Derek's voice probably sounds a little bit higher than usual. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't um, know. His voice gets pretty high sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm so happy to be here. I am actually the newest guide over at DVC Resale Market. So I came over, um, I used to work direct. So I was a guide over there for many years, helped thousands of members join the club. I actually worked out on the cruise ship. So I was on the cruise team. I did that for a while. And then in 2021, I actually left Disney um, to go travel around the world. So I did that. But, but you for... worked at the Peabody. I, I That was a very long time ago. How did you know that? I'm looking at your LinkedIn. Oh, right? <laughs> yeah. I that was the like, Peabody. Yeah, that I was like in Peabody. college. Yeah, I worked with the soccer? ducks. <laughs> Dude, it's called research, man. <laughs> yeah. No, it was so fun. The ducks used to walk through the lobby that's what every I, day. See, again, that's why I was asking because we had um, I had a friend that worked there and my kids got to lead the ducks when we were there. That oh, was, that's was so, much so fun. cool. Yeah, I did yeah. that when I was like 19 or 20 years old. So that was quite a while ago. Um, but yeah, so I, uh, just got finished traveling around the world and then I came over to DVC resale market in January. So Wait, Derek told me you had visited how many countries? 86 countries. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> wow. Wait, just all over the past year or just, no, no. Okay. In the past year we did 19 countries. So we circumnavigated wow. the globe, which was really cool. And just like something awesome to be able to say you did. Um, but no, in in my lifetime, I've been to eighty six. 
Well, this podcast, I believe we're we're heard in about twenty three countries, so we're not you know as widespread as you are. So, well, I cheated a little bit because I worked on cruise ships for ten years, so you hit okay, a lot of countries so yeah. that way, and you have a lot of time off to be able to travel in between contracts. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that makes sense. So, yeah. <laughs> well, can you tell us a little bit about this uh, this new thing that the DVC Resale Mark is launching? I, I actually, Derek told me about it. It, it actually. It felt like, because this is something I've been talking about doing for a while, it almost felt like you guys created this feature because of me. Like, I came up with this idea, I feel like. <laughs> but you tell you tell, you tell, tell us. Tell Derek that. that when, yeah, uh, I, I expect a commission <laughs> for every single one of these. But go, go ahead. <laughs> so that's actually my favorite part about working for DVC Resale Market is, like, we really listen to the guests. And so this was one thing that we just kept hearing over and over again, and that is that, you know, People might own a resort already and they want a different home resort, or maybe they have a use year and that use year maybe hasn't been working for them too well um, with the times that they travel, or maybe they bought, you know, back in 1991 and now they want a longer deed. So there's many reasons why people are asking about this, but basically what we did was we created the first ever trade in process. So if you own a contract right now and you want to trade it in before you used to have to, you know, list your contract, wait for a buyer that could take about 30 to 60 days. Then the contract has to go through right of first refusal through closing transfer, you know, all of that, that can take about 30 to 90 days. And then you turn around and find the contract that you're looking for. And then of course that could take another 30 to 90 days. So we're basically just completely simplifying the process. So if you want to trade your contract in for another contract, you're basically as of March 15th, and this is going to go from March 15th to April 30th, you're going to go on to our website and you're going to look for any listings that say trade in eligible. Um, you can also sort by status and look for all the trade in eligible listings. Um, and then basically you're going to be able to trade it in there's no obligation. You don't need to wait for the contract to go through right of first refusal and all of that fun stuff. Um, it's just going to be quick and easy. Wow. So this is like a limited time thing you guys are doing for between now and the end of August, uh, April, you said, right? For, for now. We're trying for now. it out. You're, you know? like you're testing it out, seeing how Yeah, it look, it's never been done before. Literally yeah. no one so, else has ever done this. So yeah, we're going to test it out, see how it goes. So hold on a second. So I have a question. So there's the, no Disney has no first right of refusal because it's a swap between two parties? So Disney still will have right of first refusal, but y- you do not have to worry about that. We're going to take full responsibility. So, okay, so what happens then? Like yeah. if they were to buy the contract yeah. back? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's on the company. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think, yeah, that is super interesting. So this kind of leads into the question that I had about this swap for cruise, right? The mm-hmm. point swap. So what happens, like through that process, so let's say I want to get rid of some points. I want to go on a cruise with mm-hmm. my points, right? So what happens with that whole process? Like, do I need to, I still need to book the reservation, I'm assuming for somebody at some point, but like, what happens if that doesn't sell or is it not, it does it not work that way, right? Again, if I want to swap out for a cruise, am I worried about it, my point selling or am I just worried about giving you my points? Right. So yeah, actually this was something I was super excited about when I heard about it, because of course, you know, having worked on cruise ships for so long and having, you know, helped a lot of people out there on the cruise ship join DVC. Um, yeah, we would hear all the time, you know, when I was working out on board that people like to rent out their points and use those points to turn around and book a cruise cash because the value is so much better than, you know, going direct through Disney and using your points for the cruise. And so what we've done is we have so many people that do that And we have so much inventory and we're, you know, we've grown. We're such a large company now. We have taken on full responsibility. So kind of like the trade-in process with, you know, contracts, it's going to work very similar on the cruise. So basically, instead of having to rent your points out, make that reservation, wait for the reservation to take place, wait for the funds to come in, then book your cruise, 
we're going to take full responsibility for that. So basically, we're going to rent your points out on our end. Um, and then we're going to book that cruise for you right away. So that's all done through DVC rental store. So if you want to get more details on points for cruises. No, I, I, on that, I like that. I think it makes it, it makes it something that's now a viable option. Exactly. Right? Because before, you know, to rent out your points, you're waiting on that before you can make this reservation. I, I, I like that. I'm yep. kind of surprised that's the way it works, but I'm pleasantly surprised, let's Look, say. You know, renting has become so popular. We're so confident that we'll be able to rent those points out that we're just so, taking on full responsibility for so it. So what are the stipulations around the time frame, though, then? That I would contact uh, the rental store for more details on. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not fully versed in that just because I'm on the buying side um, as opposed to the rental side. But definitely reach out to them. They can give you all the stipulations and, you know, pricing as well. The pricing is incredible. Also, if you look at, you know, using your points direct with Disney to book a cruise, um, when you do this swap, you're going to be looking at about 40 to 50% of that value. So let's say it was 400 points per person to go on that cruise. If you were to book direct, you're going to be looking at about 200 points per person um, to do the swap, which is okay. insane. I think I might have to do that then. This this new island thing might, might send <laughs> that me. That we're going to talk about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll come back around to that. Yeah, no. Um, so I, I'm excited about the other program you talked about too, though, Danny, because I've been talking about this for a while. I have three contracts, one of which has a different use here than the other two, yep. and it is a huge pain. And so I've been. Wait, so I've Tom, got, are you just going to do it? Are you saying right now you're going to do it? I mean, I'm going <laughs> to if I can find a, a, a contract that that's wor- yeah, that will work for me. Yeah, absolutely, I will do it. I mean, that that really simplifies the process because part of the reason I haven't done it before is because it was like, okay, well, I got to buy the new contract and then I got to sell the other contract and like. This is like so much easier to do it this way, exactly. you know, than, totally than just, you know, it. having to go through all that. Like it's, it's, uh, I, I mean, I still haven't found a contract that exactly matches what I'm looking for, which, you know, given it's my contract now is a little bit of a weird, it's 110 points, which is a, a little bit odd, you know, so I, I, I could either go a little bit less or a little bit more. I, you know, I don't know, but it's, um, well, well that, that brings up a good question though. So, so what happens if you decided you wanted to swap out? dissimilar points is that possible or can yeah. it only be same like 100 for 100 or so, like, so what happens if you have 200 points and you want to swap out 100 like are you getting money back or like Absolutely. how does that all work yep and so to find out the value of your trade-in if you go to the website dvcresalemarket.com um, and you go to the instant sale calculator um, it'll tell you the value of your trade-in. Uh, the only big difference is that you will not be responsible for paying closing costs on that contract. We are going to pay for it. Um, so that is definitely going to increase the price per point. So the value of that contract. So that's how you find the value. And yeah, if you're trading in a listing that is you know, more points or, or more price per point, you will get the the. Uh, balance back that's great okay yeah so it's not just it, it's not like a situation where you're ever gonna be it, by doing this you're not putting yourself in a bad position for the convenience right like where you're losing out on thousands of dollars just because it's easier no no not at it's, all i mean it's just it's like just trading process. a car essentially yeah yeah that's awesome no this is so, great i go ahead sorry trevor go ahead your question. i think tom maybe we should convince Derek and marissa to come on the show in a couple of weeks and you can do it live on the show like how i did to them when I bought the contract. <laughs> the trevor bought a contract live on the show when we heard that they were going to grandfather contract starting uh what what was that it was, right like it was for the they were gonna take away benefits changes, yeah. yeah yeah they were going to start taking away the benefits for resale yeah. contracts and trevor bought one live on the air basically <laughs> that's so fun yeah it's pretty funny um any other questions about this? I think this is a great program. I'm, I'm actually really pumped for this. Personally, like I said, I, I've been saying this for forever that I want to swap my 110 Animal Animal Kingdom point contract out for another 110 Animal point con- Animal Kingdom point contract uh, with a March use year instead of the April I have now. Uh, so I'm gonna have to kind of have to look even more. So that this is launching March 15th, you said March 15th to April 30th. And if you don't see the contract that you know, works for you, just make sure you keep checking because we are uploading new listings every single day. Just make sure you look for those trade in eligible listings. Excellent. Excellent. Any other question guys? No, that that's super cool. Though. I'm, I'm excited to see how this uh, works out once it goes live. Yeah, me too. May three. Uh, 
it, D- <laughs> Danny, how can how can our listeners reach you if they have questions? Yeah, so the best way to reach me is actually by text. I am by my phone all the time, so you could text me any day, anytime. Uh, my number is nine five four. Two five seven two four two five. So nine five four two five seven two four two five. Or you can email me at Danny at DVC Resale Market dot com. Well, Danny, we really appreciate you coming on today and, uh, and and talking a little bit about this new feature. And uh, you know, give Derek a hard time for us, please. <laughs> I absolutely will. Thank you so much for having me. All right. So, I mean, that was really interesting. What what DVC Resale Market is doing? I've been you know I'm trying surprised. to do this for a while. Huh? I mean, I'm surprised, to be honest with you. I like it, though. I think the cruise thing for me is is way more important. But um, I thought there was going to be some sort of like, well, you know, they still have to sell your points, and then once they sell your points, you can book. This is this is good, and it is cheaper. Like, there's no downside to it. You're really. talking about like, the cruise thing, not the not the other yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, the cruise swap <laughs> thing. Like, there's like no downside to it, really. Yeah, like, they're kind of in the similar thought process. They though, are, right? though. Yes, yeah, so I yeah. would agree. The, it's, it is interesting how World of DVC – listen, I know they're their sponsor, and I, I don't want anyone to, listening to just think that we're just like shilling for our sponsor. Dude, no one thinks that about me ever. <laughs> I, that's true. That is true. <laughs> but I yeah. do appreciate the fact that they're trying to make a, an already flexible program even more flexible, right? Like Absolutely. Yeah. It's pretty pretty great that they're doing all well, that. Well, because it, it changes a lot for me. Like now all of a sudden, like, okay, cool. Cruise? Okay, cool. I think they have a swap for Universal too. They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So it's like, oh, well, hold on a second, right? Thing, things may, may be different. And again, we talk about this. It's, it's not that I don't, I dislike Disney. It's just that I'm in a different spot with my family right now. Yeah. And those things sound more fun. Yeah. And, there's nothing wrong with you that. Know, Swapping out for Nintendo, for, for Nintendo, Trevor. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I could do that one year for sure. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And, and I mean, from my point of view, like, you know, I have two poly contracts and, We've been going back and forth about the 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 Disneyland, um, the villas at Disneyland. We'll talk about that, of course, in a bit here. But yeah, um, you know, we've been. I, I don't know if I necessarily want to keep all of my points at the Poly, but then you know it comes back to the point. Well, it's a pain to you know you know sell you know sell off those points and buy a new contract. And and so I know for this immediate offer that they're doing, I won't be able to do anything around uh, Disneyland. But I hope this goes well for them because it means in the future. I may be able to do something like that. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Speaking of that, somebody posted, uh, uh, I guess they got an email and I don't know if you got the email, Trevor, where it seemed like in the fine print, they, uh, they gave out some they, possible pricing. Yeah. They, they had an estimate of price or cost per contracts. And it was like an average number, which started around $34,000. If I remember correctly. So somebody brought that down to what two twenty seven per point, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah. They were they were thinking around two twenty five, two twenty seven per point. Yeah, okay. Which, okay, I mean, yeah, that's we'll have to incentives see. and all that stuff, right? So like, yeah. there's probably going to be incentives, and you know, but uh, but I mean, not that far off from what we were assuming it was going to be, right? So, I also don't want to say that that's like news either, right? Because I mean, they they sent that out, but like they, they do say subject to change, right? So <laughs> of that number could absolutely change between now and then. Um, so uh, let's get right into it. I, I think we're going to skip listener questions this week because we, um, we've we got other stuff yeah. to talk about. Executive decisions. Mm-hmm. There's a lot <laughs> yeah. to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. So uh, so we, we do have an opening date now for the Villas at Disneyland Hotel that we've Just been talking you'll, about. You'll nudge me when you're done with us? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Sure. We could do that. Um, but so we have some new pricing, uh, you know, potential pricing. And now we also have some new pictures as well of the lobby, which looks very nice. Um, but yes. we have the opening date of September 28th to 2023. The interesting thing is that is six months from now or so. And we, they're not even selling points yet. Um, I tend to think, you know, and I, I don't want to speculate necessarily on why they're not selling spo- points yet, but there are legal bodies that need to approve these things. And I'm betting it's that type of thing that they're just being held up by whatever government agency deals with it out in Anaheim. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's uh, you're right. They, they do have to deal with the, the city of Anaheim. And, and I yeah. feel this is a matter of they, it's probably easier for them to get it on the books as a cash resort yeah. than it is to, to go through all the hoops for, for DVC. So that this is probably their plan is you know that this is why they're starting with the cash resorts and their and um just um in case anybody missed it you know the dates when you can start booking there is March 15th which is this this Wednesday yep. um DVC members can book there and then on the 16th uh magic key holders or annual pass holders can book and then the 17th it's open to everybody else 
So, so obviously they're anticipating quite a bit of demand for this resort. The fact that they're they're giving you know they're they're breaking it out like this. I'm assuming yeah. they feel like this is probably going to sell out uh, pretty well, quickly. And, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, th- I think they're just they also wanted to make sure that they wanted to give DVC members first shake at it because. You know, if they didn't, oh man, can you imagine the backlash if they just, so you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that would that would not be good. So, um, yeah, and, and you're right. I I feel like this is a you know this is a stopgap until they can sort through whatever red tape they're dealing with, and then and then you'll see points come available. So so the the September 28th opening date is you know that's for cash bookings. We actually don't know. I mean, I guess whenever we can start getting points is when you'll start seeing dates for, um when you can actually book on points. So that that's still going to be a ways out. This which... is interesting to me though, because like, I wonder if they anticipate that you will be able to book with points at opening and they're just going to set aside like a tranche of rooms, like whatever they assume that they're going to de- declare up front, you know, cause well, maybe, the, yeah. Cause the way it works, you know, I, and I think most people know this, right. So they, when they, when they have these resorts, they declare a certain amount of points, right. And that opens up basically a certain amount of, of rooms, you know, just to, for for the ease ease of explaining this, and then the rest of the rooms at that resort are are you know re- are uh, reserved on cash, right? And so, like as they you know start to sell more and more points, they declare more rooms, and and that's how it goes, right? So, um, I'm assuming they in their mind have an initial amount of points that they're going to declare and make available, and maybe they're accounting for that. You know what I mean in this, but maybe they're not. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're. Just like you said, maybe the cash date, the points date is not going to be until after September 28th, which would be kind of weird for a DVC resort to not be able to be used for DVC points. But I don't know. I just (laughs) I I, I just get the feeling that they're like they don't want to paint themselves in a corner where, um, you know, people are expecting that they can book points that day. Sure. Like that. That's what that's all I can see. You You know, Disney is very careful about, you know, they don't want to oversell or over promise things. Yeah, and, sure. and so I, I I've learned not to assume anything with Disney or assume that just because we have this date, that that equates to the date that you can start using points. Yeah, no, that, that makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I, I will mention too, they, they, and I don't think we knew this information before, but there's going to be 344 rooms. Uh, I, I think we, there were some assumptions before, but I don't know if we knew the exact number. Um, but and those are going to include uh, what they're calling duo studios, which is the same as like the tower studios at Riviera, which are just meant for two people, right? So yep. I guess they're calling them duo studios here, deluxe studios, one and two bedrooms, and grand. Uh, so we, and we've seen pictures of most of these. Uh, you know, now we're getting some pictures of the uh, of the of the lobby and some more pictures of the pool. Um, you know, the lobby looks like a standard DV. Not, I don't want to say standard DVC, but it's like. You know, it's it's um it reminds me of if, you, if you've ever gone to Animal Kingdom Kidani Village, it's not like this grand lobby like uh like the the main resort is. It's kind of yeah more muted little, and yeah yes that yeah muted. That's exactly what I was gonna say. It's, yeah, but it's, it still looks very nice. It is very upscale. It just it's not like it's different. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But I like it. I mean, I think it looks it looks great. Um, and very colorful. It's a very the really going hard on the orange here, <laughs> the orange and the yellow. <laughs> yeah, they they do like their orange. I mean, I I saw the same thing in in the the Polynesian as well. That it was like they they found orange and were like, let's do everything. Let's put it everywhere. <laughs> yeah. hey, we got a lot of extra orange paint lying around. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that's I, not how things work. But. I, I wonder if it's a bit of a practical thing, too, because um, orange is a color that is very hard to show stains on. Oh, yeah, it's a good point. It, I mean, it, that that could be, you know, you know, looking at like deck chairs and stuff like that. It, yeah, it, it, it is a it is a functional reason in my mind, at least. I'm sure somebody somewhere thought about it. <laughs> I do have to say the pool does not look huge, right? It's. I mean, it doesn't look small either. It just doesn't. It doesn't look. A, I mean, it's a small resort, so it's you know. But it's also attached to the Disneyland Hotel, which has uh, the the cool monorail slide and stuff. Well, so. is our assumption though that I mean, are are we we're assuming that the DVC uh, members are going to be able to use that pool, right? Like that they're not going to be completely. Well, I like, I would be mad if I couldn't use the volcano pool at the Poly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm assuming that. I'm just saying, you, I, I don't want to assume anything, you know, you know, you know. But I, I would assume that they could use all the pools. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else about this one? 
before we go on to uh, a a Damon suggested topic for the day. Look at that. Damon actually sent this topic in. I had not seen this. So this was, uh, yeah, this one. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> so, okay, look at where it came from. I, I traverse different sites than you guys do. I know I read comic book. dot com. I just I, I read comic book. dot com. I just hadn't read this one. Uh-huh. Um, so, John Favre, you want to read it since you suggested it? No, that's okay. After you, <laughs> I was in the middle of doing something. I got woken up, you know, mid mid, mid thought process on uh, something else. So go all ahead. Right, all right, all right. Well, so uh, John Favre pitches an idea for Star Wars: The Mandalorian theme park ride. Um, which, by the way, I, he pitches an idea, but does he? I mean, <laughs> I read his quote, and I'm like, there's not really much of an idea in here. He just says, I'd probably do something that's very immersive. I'd do something with haptics worked in. I'd use assets that we use in the volume, which if you're not familiar, they film The Mandalorian in this giant soundstage called The Volume that has like a huge LED screen uh, where they can like, you know, like you have the typical green screen that actors work in front of. This is an actual like real-time led high definition screen that the actors act in front of and and is what you see on the screen if you haven't you haven't seen the the anything about the volume there's a whole bunch of behind the scenes stuff on on disney not only that but this season of the mandalorian is on point i've heard that yeah i have not watched it yet and the thing is is like some of the places that they go i mean they go to mandalore like it's crazy so Yeah. yeah it's it's really good this this season I've I've heard that I definitely I I just need to find the time to uh to watch those the the, the two episodes for Boba Fett and they're then, so short man are they really uh, the Boba Fett ones I wouldn't even bother at this point really but I, I need to like I feel like I'm gonna be confused if I just you're jump not in, jump in no okay no. Trevor have you been watching because I know you're you were a Mandalorian watcher too no um I I, I kind of you're Star Wars out right Star Wars has fallen out of my my I, so. I, I would what you call I would agree with you. <laughs> yeah, no, and Trevor, process, I would agree yeah. with you. Yeah. It's not even Star Wars. Like it is Star Wars, but it's like it's not even Star Wars. Like it's it, just It is, but I have lots of other or well, I I am fighting between this and The Last of Us, which you know, I'm watching Pedro Pascal either way. Yeah, um, I, I, but I'm only one it, episode yeah. into The Last of Us and I'm just not about it, man. Like I already <laughs> saw heart- Walking Dead. Thanks. The hard, but the hard thing for me is the the Last of Us was filmed all in Alberta, so half of me watching okay. the show is just pointing out like I know where they filmed that. Like the the closest place I found, I think, is like what would be like five miles from my house. Like oh, cool. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you, even at a Star Wars out person, The Mandalorian is really good this season. Okay, Katie Sackhoff is awesome. So you know, in general, but like it, it, it's not. It doesn't have that same sort of like, oh, Star Wars. It's like, oh, this is just cool. So yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah, I, I, I guess th- that's a fair point is, you know, if it, I, I feel like we were kind of beat over the head a little bit with like the main, like everything had to tie back to the main Star Wars. And I guess if it's breaking out and doing yeah, its own it, thing, that's. Yeah. I mean, it ties more into your jam. What's that show again? Uh, Rebels. Cartoon. Yeah, it ties yeah. more into that than anything. Well, the one guy that's like the one of the main directors and writers was the guy that did did Rebels, I think. Right. right. Yeah. So like that's I mean, it makes sense. When you said Mandalore, I was like, I was like, well, they went to Mandalore and Rebels, but and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, yeah. So anyway, well, no. See, the problem I have right now is my wife and I are. Re- I talked about Yellow Jackets so many times in the show, but Yellow Jackets is like they're one hour episodes, right? And that, it's coming back in two weeks, and so like my wife and I've been trying to rewatch the first season because it's been. A while you know what i mean so and there's just it's one of those shows that there's a lot of stuff going on well, so like we just yeah. forgot everything you so, know? what was it even outer banks that happened to me like i watched outer banks which was like dude it's totally just this ramped up goonies nonsense at this point but <laughs> i i forgot so much of what happened i know that um was the shadow and bones coming back which again i've read all the books I watched the first season and i'm like i don't remember the books or the first season <laughs> like i don't know what i'm gonna do jeez have you yeah. watched the Have you watched the new that uh, Disney Plus channel show that you've been excited about? Because uh, I saw it on my Disney oh, Kif? Plus this morning. Yeah, yeah, Kiff is pretty good, man. Uh, but I'll okay. tell you what I watched. What I really liked is Chang Can Dunk on Disney Plus. Oh, I saw that advertisement. Yeah, it was yep. good, man. Good. It was good. Okay. I liked it a lot. Okay. Well, anyway, back to back to Mandalorian. <laughs> Back yeah. to Mandalorian. I mean, I, I would be interested in a ride because I like the show. I think that if you're I just don't want it to be, you know, Millennium Falcon 2.0, though, which is well, what this sounds like. That's the thing. I read this yeah. and I was like, that just sounds like the Millennium Falcon ride that we already have with just the Razor Crest instead of the Millennium, Fa- Millennium Falcon, right? Yeah, it's got to be more than that. But I, I also think that there's a lot of missed opportunity in the Millennium Falcon 
ride. Like, dude, there's what do you what am I doing? Right? Like, if there was more to do in a Mandalorian one that like it mattered, like, yeah, okay. I, I do like the one comment that Favreau made. He said, uh, I know when I was younger, I love when they pulled the curtain back on effects and movies. It re- it really made me probably want to do what I'm doing now. So I think it would be an educational component, but not educational like a museum, like sitting here, feel this, this is how we did it. Yeah. To me, that feels like a cross between um, like, yeah, with Millennium Falcon, but then kind of back to like great movie ride. So, so here, like, yeah, like why can't we have, you know, with what we have going on, now that I'm thinking about this, like why can't I have a video of like Millennium Falcon ride from like the outside that then they like – soup up with like some special effects like that would be cool like give me like the whole ride with special effects obviously right like on something that's the same for everybody but that's you in the cockpit yeah i, I yeah. get down with that and, that and sorry cool. I, I have to correct myself before they come for me in the memes i didn't mean great movie ride ride i meant backlot tour <laughs> like, I, yes, totally different forward. rides but i had the movie <laughs> ride in my head sorry sorry I mean, everyone I, I know what you're saying right because like so like the 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 volume is like this just gigantic screen, right? Like mm-hmm. it's a big giant screen, and like they are doing some things with some of these screens, like you know, like if you look at the Pirates ride in, in Shanghai, right? Like they have some floor to ceiling LED screens that are like kind of like the volume in a way, mm-hmm. and the, and so like, and I'm just trying to figure out how you do that with the Razor Crest. I mean. I don't know. There's some interesting thoughts real, there, though. Yeah, real prop in the middle with like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting idea, and I'd be kind of surprised if they didn't. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys saw that the that uh you know uh Mando is is now has a uh, you know Baby Yoda, and don't yell at me, this Grogu. I don't care. It's Baby Yoda. Um, you know, meeting we know with people like, like yeah. I know. I'm just some people get mad when you say Baby Yoda, and it's like. Because well, that's Grogu. not his name, though. But that's it's what Grogu, his name yeah, is. But... Yeah, it's Baby Yoda. Listen, but... the first season you could get get away with that, but dude, yeah. no, not anymore, okay. man. Do we just call him Grogu? He, he, make feel listen, better? even in the third <laughs> season, he even says something. The Mandalorian says something like, "Nah, dude, his name is Grogu." Like, get it right. <laughs> well, but are, have you guys seen the like the you know they have the wandering Mandalorian going around a uh, galaxy's edge with Grogu. And it's like a full like animatronic Grogu that's like you know making sounds yeah, yeah. and moving around and like it's it's really cool like I've and it's now a permanent thing at Galaxy's Edge. It was just Disneyland. Now that it's Disney World too. But um, I mean it's kind of awesome. <laughs> like I'm so going to tell you though, they don't do more. But like Grogu in the Mandalorian is the worst special effects part of the whole show now. What do you mean? Like because like, I just don't think he looks realistic. So but it's a puppet. It's like a legit. I think that's what Damon's saying. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's a puppet. Yeah. Everybody absolutely. complains about CGI all the time. And then wants physical props. And then you, so you're complaining. It's a physical. So I, I like the thought about the physical props, but it's almost like the Muppets seem better than Grogu. I, I don't know. Weird. I don't love Grogu, especially this season, because there's so much that's going on. That's so cool from an effect standpoint, like where they go and what happens and some of the other monsters and stuff. I kind of look at Grogu and I'm like, dude, this thing looks too puppety, but eh, he's, he's the least impressive effect on the show. Yeah. I yeah. did say like the, the, the wandering character though, like if you guys haven't seen videos of it, I'm it's sure pretty in impressive. person way different. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I even saw somebody I, take a picture where he was just standing too. Like the, they just had Grogu standing on the p- pavement at one point too, which I'm like, how? But yeah, go ahead, sorry, Trevor. That, that's impressive. No, I, I was gonna say, I, I feel what you're saying, Damon. Like, mm-hmm. it, you're. It's kind of like when they push it too far with like animatronics that kind of it, it, it pass or you know it it breaks. I don't. I don't know what the right a, term a little is. bit. Like, yeah, I know what you're saying, and I think this season yeah. of The Mandalorian because it's so good in terms of what's going on like they're you know they're on mandalorian it's like it's just it's so well done that it just kind of pulls me out a little bit i don't know that that's just th- there's some monsters this season that are just ridiculously well done ridiculously yeah, okay. all right we have so much to talk about and i can't that's... be on all day what do we what do we got here <laughs> all right so the rumor we talked about last week it's exactly what we thought it was that, yeah that that uh, <laughs> so we <laughs> we have an update to that. Ken Marino basically came out as like, I don't know, what's, I know no, no, nothing. Like why? And this is what I this is what we said last week. Like why would he know anything? He's in the attraction, exactly. but like he doesn't even talk. And like so, it's not like they're calling him up first and being like, hey, we're gonna change this thing. But he said he said on Twitter, I have no idea what they're changing it to. Someone said 
that uh, to me at some point. So then I said it. It was more of a rumor than anything else, I suppose. Maybe it's going to be a new Billy Holiday ride. Could be good. Obviously, he's being sarcastic there. <laughs> <Yeah>. But it's, <laughs> you know, he's a funny guy. But um, yeah, I just thought that I had to put that on there since we talked about the rumor last week. Part, partially, like, I think all of us knew that rumor probably wasn't true, but it was fun to talk about, I think. So <laughs> the the idea of it. Yeah, I, I just, uh, the side note to this is, you know, th- this is in the same vein as believing your bus driver at Disney yes. for any rumors. like. But even less informed, I feel like. Right? Yeah, yeah like, you, you know, somebody that was in a video, like, you know, 20 years ago, like, <laughs> yeah. what are they going to know? <laughs> yeah, why would they know that, right? So, yeah. um, I, I think this next piece of news, though, before we do our ad is uh, really, I, I actually think this is huge news. Um, So, and if you've watched the Imagineering story, you've seen this guy before. So, uh, Walt Disney Imagineering is bringing back Chief Creative Officer Bruce Vaughn, uh, who had left to go to uh, well, he left to go to a VR company, and then he went to Airbnb after that, and uh, now he's going to come back and he's going to lead, uh, well, co-lead uh, Disney Imagineering. Uh, this is, I think, huge because he was in charge of Imagineering during a lot of what a lot of people, you know, some of some of the best stuff that they've done basically <laughs> in the recent in recent history. So uh, I to me, I see this as, a, you know, a lot of people are talking about all the changes that are happening. And, you know, some of them are not like Bob Iger things. This feels like a Bob Iger change to me. This feels like he's trying to get somebody uh, that is about the art back into uh, to Imagineering as opposed to the business side of things. Uh, you know, that's just what my thoughts are, but I think, you know, this is huge. And I know this guy is like, from what I've read, super well-respected at Imagineering and, and well-respected in the industry. And considering that Disney uh, has lost, you know, people like, um, uh, you know, they've lost, uh, Joe Rody and, uh, and, um, you know, and, uh, what's his name? Um, gosh, the guy that just left. <laughs> the fact that we can't even think of. Bob Weiss. Imagineers. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Bob <laughs> Weiss. So Bob Weiss yeah. was, was he, he had been with the company for, for basically forever. And, uh, he, he just, and he was running, uh, he was running Imagineering and he just retired. So, um, you know, I don't know. This seems like really positive news to me. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I, you know, initially when I read, you know, oh, they, they pulled someone back from Airbnb and I, <laughs> I, I think about, you know, there, there's definitely been a lot of negativity around Airbnb. Like, even if you've never sure. used it, you hear about, you know, horror stories from it and whatnot, but, you know, reading more what, you know, he was trying to figure out like packages and ways yeah. to improve the guest experience, which you, you know, outside of the the obvious issues that they had, you know, you know, he was somebody whose drive was, you know, how the guests perceived it. So, yeah. um, you know, going back to, you know, okay, if he's coming back into Imagineering, he obviously has his head in the right place. And, and it sounds like you said, you know, you know, Bob is probably trying to assemble, you know, his, you know, the right team for the right job. And, and so why would he not bring somebody in who he knows will care about what they're doing and not someone who's just there to collect a paycheck, which, you know, not yeah. to say that, that other people are there to do that, but um, you know, the, the previous management seemed to be more concerned with that, which, you know, kind of trickles down to the people in departments like Imagineering. Yeah. And if you, if you watch the Imagineering story, right, like they, they talk about this pretty in depth, right. That there's throughout their history, there has been this kind of, pendulum swings different ways right there's they're depending on the leadership of the company sometimes they care more about the business side of things sometimes they care more about the creative side of things right and Iger's big thing is the creative side of things right he's you know he he keeps saying over and over that the entire soul of the company is storytelling right and so mm-hmm. for me for him to bring to bring Bruce back in who is a guy you know for those that don't know he was there for I was a 20 some years right he led uh, research and development for for Imagineering. Uh, you know, as part of that, he was the chief creative officer for a long time. So basically, think of anything they did prior to 2016. He was basically overseeing basically everything over tw- from 2016 and 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 uh, you know 20 years before that. So, I mean, that's that's pretty a pretty great time. There was a lot of great. That's stuff a lot that of good stuff. Now. Yeah. yeah. So this is, I mean, look, this is, I think this is great. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty pumped for this. And I, like I said, I think this is a, if you haven't watched the Imagineering story, he is featured quite a bit in that. And he's been responsible for a lot of great stuff at the parks over the years. So I, I think 
think this is a, a good step in the right direction, especially with how much experience they've lost over the past couple of years, uh, you know, with Imagineers retiring or, or leaving. So, yeah, but yeah, got to build that back up or else, uh, you know, yeah. Disney just becomes another roadside attraction. Yeah. <laughs> well, but they, you know, somebody, I think in this article, they called it brain drain, right? Like they had this, yeah, offset some of the recent brain drain and loss of history, right? So that's, that's what they're trying to do here since they've had so many high profile guys, you know, retire over the past couple of years. Um, I'm trying to think there's a couple more too, right? Uh, was it, um, who else left? Oh gosh, it's killing me that I can't remember anybody right now. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that designed Splash Mountain, he retired recently. Um, we just talked about him too. Yeah, and I again, I I'm totally blanking on names right I'm just, now. Yeah, I'm totally yeah. blanking on names too. All right, anything else on that before we move on? No, nope. let's. Uh, I guess we had, we're going to do our ad, and then um, we'll get to the thing Damon really wants to talk about. All right, this week uh, our sponsor is Monera, uh, who is a World of DVC company and the industry leader for financing DVC resale contracts. Monera offers lending with the longest terms available at 12 years, the option of no credit check, instant approval, low down payments, and no prepayment penalties. If you're thinking of purchasing a DVC contract on the resale market, go check out their online quick quote first. You may be surprised just how affordable joining DVC can be. Go to monerafinancial.com or call 317-245-8800. And when you speak to them, be sure to let them know that Welcome Home sent you. Also, I believe... uh, um, are we in the drop down on this uh, for this one as well? I think we're on the drop down oh. for everywhere now. Yeah. Okay. Good. So yeah, if, it, yeah. if they have a drop down, uh, you know, make sure you pick Welcome Home because uh, that's that's the only drop down you should be picking. That's right. Yeah. Even if you've heard of heard of them from another show, please select yep, our just pick us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to do our random ride today, or do we feel like we not have enough time for that? We don't. Dude, I don't think we do. I think we have to table. Yeah. It. Yeah, but that's fine. That's that that can, that's a rotating segment. We can do any time, right? So we'll, we'll yeah. do it next week, and maybe we'll leave it up to people to guess on what the ride is. So uh, let's not drop any hints or anything. Let oh, okay. can I out. just can I give like a really general hint? Oh no, you're gonna <laughs> no. give it away. <laughs> no, I won't give it away. I swear. You're I'm totally gonna, gonna give it away. I'm just gonna say one of my favorite things at Disney. There you go. Okay. That's it. That's that's it. It's one of my favorite things at Disney. Then they can, you know, and it's something I ride every single time I'm there. Dole Whip is not a ride. No, it's not. I don't like Dole Whips. We've been over there. <laughs> well, that's my All favorite. Right. That's true. Okay. So, Damon, you want to get into this? Uh, so, uh, the Disney Cruise Line has now announced uh, their Lighthouse Point, their new island in the Bahamas, will open in summer of 2024. Yeah, um, there's a lot of lot of stuff here, but I think the pro I've right from the get-go i already have two things that i just don't like about it right there's okay. there's no discussion of a snorkeling area or did i just miss it i didn't see anything though i mean they might not have announced everything yet right why would you not <laughs> announce that though i don't know they, it seems like a, a bit of a detail. selling point yeah but I've, i don't know if the island is going to have snorkeling like it might not so that's one thing i'm worried let's say i'm more worried about and then i would say this interactive family water play area looks terrible it's a splash pad yeah yeah where you know the current castaway key does not like it has a little bit more ish i feel like than this it feels a little bit more like this looks like no kid over 12 is going into this family water play area i don't think it's meant for it's it's a three to 12 so yeah no kid. no no, no. they're two separate there. things i think Oh yeah, yeah. You're talking about the you're talking about the one with the water slide on it, and like, yeah. The, okay. But I'm saying the water slide you're not looks about the splash pad. Okay. No, no, no. I'm talking about the water slide, and it looks not good. I mean, I don't think it's meant for teenagers, though. It it looks but like the a, other like one. A you can go on it as a teenager, like the yeah. Castaway Key. So, and then if you look at the additional recreational activities like for kids and kids at heart, so that's everybody. Yeah. I don't see snorkeling. Let me see. What's a Gaga ball pit, by the way? I don't know. I saw that and I was wondering that exact same thing. I guess I could Google it and find yeah, out. I but guess we're going to have to right now. But A covered gaming pavilion. Maybe that's for the older kids. I don't know. <laughs> gaming pavilions? Do they mean volleyball? And, and I mean, the- but the, the other one has that too. A Gaga ball pit just looks like this. I don't even know what this is. I mean, I guess it's a game. But again, I'm not. What those are the this? things that to yeah. me, I oh. just wasn't really sold on. I mean, I still want to go because I love cruises and the the art and culture pavilion looks 
awesome. The designs look amazing. The designs like, look amazing. Yeah. I think the food will probably be, you know, good as well. Like I, I all of that looks good. They have not announced a lot of the um port adventures. Yeah. So kind of have to look for that and maybe some of the port adventures are going to be, you know, snorkeling or something along those lines, but you know, having that snorkeling area at the other island is is pretty fun. I, I would know. be surprised if they don't have that, right? Like they I, would have I, announced it here, though, if it wasn't part of a port adventure, so. which means money. And, oh, you mean they're going to charge extra for it? That's what you're. I saying? mean, maybe it's yeah. going to be not as open as the one that's a castaway, because castaway you can just kind of rent your equipment and go whenever you want, right? Yeah, I mean it. It says families can relax and play along white sandy beaches and turquoise waters at the expansive family beach on the east side of the island, which will be centrally located. Blah blah blah. Near near market style dining, recreation, and other amenities. I mean, that just feels very general. Like I, I, yeah, I don't know. But again, when you start listing things like you know watercraft and bicycle rentals, that's where you would say mm. snorkeling rentals. Maybe they don't know yet. You know, the, I, I, know I, I don't think they don't know. They know. I just don't <laughs> think it's going to have it. I don't but know. we'll I'd see. I, I we'll think if they, if they do have it, I think it's going to be a port adventure adventure rather than an open snorkeling sure. area. Yeah, but I do enjoy the opening opening <laughs> the open snorkeling area. Um, so I don't know that that's the disappointment and the water slide. I feel like you have you know again you have competing people. You have um, what's the what, what's that one from Royal Caribbean like the greatest day at sea or whatever oh, yeah, that, that that one looks crazy. I, I feel like I've seen commercials and that one looks like yeah, a whole bunch of that, crazy. Like <laughs> that looks awesome. But again, what yeah. I'm feeling about this island is what continues to push me away from Disney is that it seems like you're going to cater to younger kids. Yeah, and that's what I'm just not about. Like that's fine. I know there's an adult beach, but that's just a beach, man. Like, but why can't the adult beach have water slots? Like, why can't, like, a lot of yeah. the community that you get going to amusement parks, right? I feel like is people that would enjoy doing that sort of stuff. And I just, that's where I'm missing the, this, this sort of thing here. I don't know. That's just my personal take. Hopefully that's not the case, but that's what it feels like now. I, I feel you on that, Damon. I mean, it, it, you know, reading this as well so i i looked up what gaga ball is and yeah. it's it's definitely it's a kids game it's it's not you know i, I mean i think adults playing it would be a very different game <laughs> it look it would get very aggressive very quickly mm-hmm. um it you know yeah to to your point it, it seems like you know there's a lot of stuff here for for younger families or up to you know yeah. like that preteen kind of age bracket but then past that it's like well you're not you're not going here as, you know, a teenager to adult unless I don't want to sit just on the beach, man. Yeah. Like, I want to do stuff. Right. And, and I, I'm in the same boat as you, you know, that that's why we go to theme parks. That's why we, yeah. we do a lot of that stuff is that, you know, I, I don't want to sit. I don't, you know, even if I went to a place like this, I would want to be doing something and, and, and not just like hiking and not on just nature like trails. volleyball. Well, see yeah. the problem, the hiking and nature trails are not even as bad as like volleyball. So last time we were there, we played volleyball, but we have friends that play volleyball. I play volleyball, right? Like, so the thing about it was, is that I can go play volleyball anywhere. And and that's what, like an hour or two of your time at most. When yeah. You, there, play, like... you play against, um, <laughs> they, they were a little overmatched. So you play against the crew members, but we had like, we had like a squad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, my, my friend plays, his daughter's playing in college. Like I played in college. Like we had a lot of people that were just good, good. So it was a little overmatched, but it, so it wasn't as long as you would have thought. But that being said is that I still would have liked, you know, other things. I don't know. That's just me. You know, there, there is an interesting thing here though, too, where it's, they got a lot of pushback on this place from like locals and the government. Mm-hmm. Um, I almost wonder if they made them scale down the plans maybe and and maybe snorkeling because you know you do get people that will snorkel with a whole lot of you know sunscreen on and things like that who knows yeah dropping their stuff in the yeah i'm not sure they i mean because i know that there was a lot of controversy about this island when they bought it there was a lot of pushback from locals and so i think they tried to do this in a way that was not because i know they like they donated most of the island i think back to like the people or something like it's like a it's like a um 
I don't want to say it's like a park, but it's it's basically like a, uh, a nature. Uh, what am I thinking of here? It's like a Preserve. nature preserve. Preserve. Yeah, like they yeah. don't like th- there was a there was all sorts of concessions they had to make to make this happen, basically. <laughs> so I do wonder if that scaled back their plans in any way. But I mean, I looked at this and I thought it looked I thought it looked pretty awesome. Like just the buildings looked awesome. Um, I, I don't think I've ever seen buildings look like this before. <laughs> um, so. I don't know. I thought that it looked incredibly cool. I get your points though. I do. I do think it's interesting. They're going to have 20 premium family cabanas that you can rent out. Have you, did you see those? Yeah. 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 That I saw somebody said only so one expensive though. Yeah, probably crazy expensive. Right. It's, it's funny because they're so expensive and then there's still not enough of them. Right. So I don't even know what that means. Like, <laughs> from, I don't even know what that means. Like from the standpoint not expensive of, enough or they need more. Or, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, absolutely. I've not, so I, I you know I have not been on a Disney cruise. I've really only been on one cruise in my life actually. Um I just haven't gone on a cruise in a long time. So like how long do you even stay on this on this a island? Day. It's like a whole day just Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And we so took one of the there. cruises where we did it twice, which was awesome. Like those are super unfortunately they're super expensive cruises, but we did one where it's 2 days at Castaway Key. They do them every once in a while. That was fun. I wonder what kind of watercraft rentals they're going to have. It says watercraft rentals. Like what kind of watercraft can you rent? Mm-hmm. Think they have jet skis? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, I, I thought I thought you were pumped about going here, Damon, but it sounds like you're. I mean, I want to go. He's like you're kind of like, pumped, but kind of not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's yeah. exactly how I feel. Yeah, I mean, you know, I one of these days once I get get myself onto one of these cruises, I'll definitely. Uh, <laughs> what you, you know what this is kind of like um it, it, it I, I feel like this is going to be like you taking your daughter to peppa pig park tom no no definitely not <laughs> well no I, in that you know you know you, you you're like oh you know what you're going to a theme park but then you find out well it's you know a, a very kid centric theme park sure, and you sure. find out how quickly there's like nothing to do there past a certain age group and right? you saw that new peppa pig coming to texas right yeah Probably it's interesting change. because that area is now going to have Universal, Peppa Pig, and a water park. Yeah, Tom's planning a trip. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I mean, listen, Peppa Pig was fine, right? Like it was fine, yeah, but it but... was. It it felt like I was at like a county fair kind of. That's the kind of rides that they had that were just custom. You know what I mean? Right, but but like, but also like my point was like you you said it yourself is you know it's it's you know for very young kids it's great but you know that you know obviously past a certain age it's not somewhere you want to be and to have this as part of a cruise like like to Damon's point is it's like you know yeah if you show up there with your family and you know it's not just about you know you know Damon you're kind of talking about you know there's not you know more adult centric stuff to do or, or, you know, like, you know, splash pads seem like they only go up to age 12. Like what about your kids? You know, your kids are older, you know, yeah. you're all going to show up there and be bored. Like, like that, that's not, that's not a great way for them to to sell something like this. <laughs> yeah. I mean the, the, it's probably more the teens that are the problem. Cause like, you know, they have the adult exclusive beaches with like a, looks like a spa of some sort and some bars and, so like if you're if you're an adult only or, or you know if you, but that's not what the the market is right like that's not the most yeah. most of the people are not going to be adult only although I will well, say and it's not young kids only either like there no no a definitely whole not range there that they're kind of ignoring I think yeah maybe yeah yeah so okay anything else we want to say about this no no okay. all right so the other thing we wanted to talk about here was uh so disney had a uh they had imagineering go to um i'm clicking on the article and now i'm forgetting what it is (laughs) south by southwest um so and and really they 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 had the hulk thing there which we've already seen like that's nothing new but they also showed this prototype robot of uh of uh what is it judy hops on like roller skates and it does like a somersault and then it jumps back up again, basically, which was this is some Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. I'm just going to say it. like, the, <laughs> well, like, it's not covered in the skin, right? It's just got the. Yeah, it's it's, it's still robot. like, like, yeah. I don't know, like, like, that's great that they're, you know, they're making these advancements and animatronics and stuff. I don't know if I would want Judy Hopps rolling up to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, were you creeped out by the by the um the Groot one that they made? Remember that free fro- roaming Groot one that they showed off uh maybe last year or the year before? 
Is this the the teenager Groot? Or? Yeah. Well, no. It was it was like a it was like a younger Groot. I would say maybe adolescent Groot. <laughs> okay. You don't remember that one? I, I don't. Re- I don't remember that. No. Okay. Yeah, because they had that one, and then I mean, but this one's a little bit different. This one is more like the Spider Man robot, but like less advanced than that. But it does like a little somersault and gets back up again. But I think the cooler one is actually the the Tinkerbell one. Did you guys look at the Tinkerbell mm-hmm. video? Is, the t- is it a hologram? I feel like is I don't it? think it is. What is it then? I don't know. <laughs> it's a good question. I Maybe feel it is. is. Is it a robot or a hologram? Like I don't I know think what it's else a it hologram. Do you think I, so? I, 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 I think this is like how um, you know the the Beauty and the Beast thing uh, or that show that that um, you're talking about, Tom, like, where they have like Lumiere in it, and it's like a oh yeah yeah. I, I feel this is the same kind of technology as that. Uh, you but, know how I feel about holograms. I love yeah. me those holograms. He wants the, the, the real yeah, hologram. <laughs> the interesting thing is it's supposed to be interactive, so it's you know you know how ha- you know having a you know a a hologram of Tink is one thing, but having one that will actually, you know, react to you and, you know, anybody yeah. else in your group, that's amazing. What, like, Tre- <laughs> Trevor, what was that video game you could play at the arcade that was the holograms that had the big glass dome over the top? Do you know what I'm talking hologram? about? <laughs> is that what it was called? It was called hologram. Was it really? Yeah. Um, Sega. Um, hold on. All right. Well, now, it, it now was, uh, um, oh, hologram time traveler. That was, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. When was that? Like in the like, like 1990, 1991, it says 91. Wow. I, yeah, I saw it. Initial release. I guess. Okay. 90. It says 91 okay. by Sega. Where are we now? 30 years later and I can't get holograms in Disney. Let's just be a hologram, please. <laughs> did you? Did you? So I, I watched the video of Tinkerbell. I watched a close up and it looks like it is just it's a hologram. Right, just a hologram. I, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. No, I, I listen. I know. Sorry, I mean, I just, it, just... it looks pretty. I mean, it looks like the holograms they already do. Like you know, the the things that Damon do, doesn't feel are holograms. Like where they, you know, like when you go on like what? Rise of the Resistance or like some of those other rides, and they like have somebody beamed in, and I, you know, you haven't done it. Yeah, I know. Those but, are holograms, though. I, I mean, there's closest we can get to holograms. No, in 1991, we had holograms. Yeah, I, I think the thing with this is like, because like that game that you're talking about, you could, you know, you could see it from multiple angles. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching the I'm watching the YouTube right now because yeah, I, it's, like, I it, 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 it is, you know, prime 90s viewing. Absolutely. It, it definitely is. Yeah. But you know what? You can walk around the thing and see that dude cowboy in the hologram 3D glory. I will tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I, I, and that's, I hope, you know, they, they showed it on a stage and if it's just a flat projection, you know, that's obviously going to take away from, you know, it's, you know, only look at Tink from this angle. Right. But if it's, you know, sure. if she's in the thing and you can like walk around it and see from different sides, like, yeah, that'll be, that'll I mean, be they, amazing. They pretty <laughs> much have, I mean, they pretty much do that at the, the, the pre-show for, for rise of resistance. I mean, the, the one, uh, the one, hol- the one. I, I guess I, I won't call it a hologram, but I mean, no, like they do it in like not. a tube, so it looks, it looks like they're there to me. But just I mean, because it's in a tube in two D does not make a hologram. It doesn't. That's called it doesn't trickery. Look 3D. It looks three D. No, but but it, it as is. you as you turn around it, you're still facing the same side. No, yeah. no, no. I I don't think so. Not for that. I mean, I I'm trying to think of if I've seen it really from the side, but like. I mean, this one, this Tinkerbell thing, I mean, you can, if you look at the video, you can see the screen. I mean, it's not, it's not that difficult to see and it does look flat, but I mean, I don't know. I guess the interactivity part is, it's more about the interactivity than the, the actual. Yeah, man. I I don't think that that's a hologram. I'm watching the, the pre-show now. I mean. It's not. It is not. I guess. I mean, I just, I I don't know how you define a hologram. Being able to walk all the way around it. And it. Well, okay. Yeah. True. it's, Having yeah. it be a a proper three D representation called a hologram for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> the I definition. Know. I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, if you, I mean, I, I don't know if you could walk all the way around. If they made it so you could walk it around doesn't, all the way but around. But again, it, but. if you watch the POV, it doesn't look like it's all the way around. Yeah, that, well, it's because it doesn't need to be the way it's set up. Right? No, it but, doesn't yeah. need to be. It doesn't yeah. need to be hologram time traveler, the best game ever. <laughs> 
I'm watching. It's, it's so funny. I'm watching <laughs> this was such cowboy. A like, hog. You yeah, like, oh, it was. <laughs> and I'm watching this cowboy fight ninjas and knights, and it's just hysterical how bad and awesome it is at the same time. Oh boy, <laughs> you and the holograms. I, I 1991, do... man. <laughs> like, why can't we have it? I don't know. I mean, maybe there's just not a a, re, a something we had they a Tupac wanted hologram. To I mean, yeah, we had a Tupac know. hologram. Like, we can do it. It's possible. Yeah. All right. Well, what do you think they use this uh, this this Judy Hops thing for? Like, I that's the question I have. Right? Like, it's to terrorize people. <laughs> <laughs> i mean like is it gonna know. be are it's they just, trying to yeah go ahead, sorry go, go sorry ahead. it's just unsettling to me like like the robot without any like like without any Westworld? like yeah it's 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 a little so, too um t1000 for me i mean westworld was canceled too another bummer by the way yeah it didn't get didn't get to finish out the uh the last season yeah the canceled and so- taken off of hbo which is even worse because like now i have to go find it somewhere mm. Because it's not even on HBO Max anymore. They took it out. Oh, I don't even want to see. Now that it's not coming back, like I don't want to see it anymore anyway. Yeah. Well, I, I hadn't been caught up on the last season, but I, I wasn't either. But again, like now I'm just happy I hadn't didn't waste my time. To be honest yeah, with you, yeah. um, I, have to I was going to say but... I keep forgetting to mention that. So I booked Dollywood for August. They have a new coaster, Big Bear coaster. Oh yeah, I saw out. that one. Yeah. Yep. Um, kind of excited for it. it, it it's a launch coaster. It looks like a. A little bit more intense slinky is what I'm going to kind of go okay. with because it's a three launch coaster, right? No loops, but so there is upside a, down. Yeah. I, th- I feel like, I don't, don't know if there's a loops. full barrel roll. I don't think there's a full barrel roll, but there might be close to it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's super duper long, um, the coaster. And I saw, um, some reviews of the, not of that because obviously it's not running yet, but of similar rides in Europe. The only downside is that people were saying they wish it had some sort of like motorcycle sort of action rather than just a car. But, you know, the theming in this Wildwood Grove, and we haven't been since they put in Wildwood Grove because we, you know, we canceled our trip in December. But what's interesting is the theming there. So it's this black bear, I guess it's based on like the silhouette of a bear, kind of the coaster itself or something along those lines. But it looks kind of neat. And you go behind a waterfall and things like that. But I'm looking forward to it. So it's, we were going to do Silver Dollar City and Dollywood. And then when I realized that there was a new coaster, I said, why do I want to go to the Ozarks? Like that's a far trip from Dollywood there. So we're just going to stick it out in Dollywood and try this new, um, this new area that we haven't been to. Plus the new coaster. I said, I think spring, they said it's announced. It will be open. So hopefully soon. Yeah, this is it's interesting because it's not like um it doesn't look extraordinarily intense, right? Like it's, it's not, not because that yeah. part of the park, Wildwood Grove, is not supposed to be intense. It's it's kind more of a of family like, coaster, as Disney would call it. Yeah. It, it is it is a little bit of a family coaster, but I think Disney's family coasters are a little too family. This is like what I would expect a family coaster to be. But what is kind of interesting about it is they already have Fire Chaser, which is a family coaster. So to have this seems a little redundant, but it finishes off that Wild Grove area. And for amusement park people, you, you have to realize like there's still a fair amount of land there and they're kind of completing this area. And I can expect Dollywood to make another new area. They're, they're a little bit different and they keep their old rides around, it feels like. Right. And there's not a lot of updating of rides, which is nice. And you know what I mean? Like it's because you have more rides. So I'm thinking that we're going to get a new area as kind of the next step in the evolution of Dollywood. Yeah. So according, I I just was watching some videos of it. It's, it's Mm -hmm. the track is really long, but it's Mm -hmm. according to Wikipedia, it's a minute 40 ride. Yeah. 48 miles per hour. It looks like top speed. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It looks cool. I mean, it looks looks interesting. And the theming, you know the theming is is fit for exactly what they wanted. So yeah, yeah, yeah it just it takes up a lot of space, man. Like it's huge. It, it does, and I think part of it is that they want you to be able to see the coaster from anywhere in that area of the park. Gotcha. Okay. So like, kind of like a, a Universal one is not as long, but you know, like you can kind of see the roller coaster in the beginning of the park uh, as well. But this one looks like you're going to see it in this whole area from start to finish, and the entrance is all the way in the back. 
Okay, gotcha. So you got to go all the way to the back of the park. To yeah, go. and we're we're sta- staying at the Dream War Resort. I don't remember when the new resort is going to be open. I feel like it's not this year, though. It might be twenty four. I'm not. I'm not one hundred percent sure on that. But it was funny because we were going to. Our family size makes it difficult always, right? With five, so we yeah. said, "Oh, well, we want the kids to bring friends." So it was like, "Okay, well, we'll do two rooms, and then that way we can have eight. Well, then. My wife comes up and she's like, hey, you know, I'm on the phone with them now. They're like, they have a junior suite that sleeps six. And I was like, well, how much less is it? And she's like, it's half price. And I was like, yeah, I think we're going to do that instead. So we're going to do a junior <laughs> suite that sleeps six and then only one person gets to bring somebody. So we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Gonna have but, to have, kids are going to have to fight it out to uh, so, some Hunger Games <clears throat> type fight. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the thing Damon. about you Hollywood is whoever they, wins, they, they, bring one. <laughs> they have these little um, – so they do things a little bit differently in terms of getting on rides. If you're staying at their hotel, they have this little – I don't even know what you would call it – gadgety thing that allows you to select a ride from the thing and then it tells you what time to go. I don't know if they still have those. It will be interesting. But they also open the park an hour early for the resort guests. But the difference is, is that this resort is nowhere near as big. So that first hour that you're there as a resort guest, like there's not a lot of people in the park. That's nice. Yeah. So you get we'll see how it goes. Yeah. But yeah, so now we're, we're booked in. We got um, Saratoga, which is probably going to be a one day Epcot trip. I feel like we're going to end up with that. I don't know, you know, cause it's um, flower and garden. I feel like that's what will happen, but it could be a no park trip or it could be that July will be in Florida for a swim meet. And then August will be in Dollywood. Nice. And I think we'll be at Hilton Head at some point, but not staying at Disney. I feel like Memorial Day. I feel like, but we won't be at Disney. We'll be at relatives house. I'll be taking no vacations this year. So, <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you want to go back to school. Uh, well, there's that. And also just there's weddings and stuff that are going on this summer. So I just I'm not a wedding person. I like, don't want to go. I, Listen, I, I don't despise go to going to other people's weddings. I kind of have to go to my sister's wedding. I, it's kind of important. <laughs> I understand that, but I feel like weddings are just like a, a, a leech on my time off and my wallet. Well, listen, Damon, this is at this this wedding is happening in July in Asbury Park. And, you know, Asbury Park is is different from what it used to be. But yep. the hotel rates are six hundred dollars a night minimum. And, and oh, and I'm sure. Summer. Yeah. And it's going to be hot, like hot, hot. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah. So, yeah, no, literally. We had snow today. Did you have snow? Here? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> we had snow today. Good snow. Oh, you today? guys are cute. Yeah. Uh, Trevor so we... has snow every day. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I, we, I woke up. We haven't had snow all year, Trevor. And I've been telling my friends, like, hey, we've not had a flake this year. I wake up and it's snowing. And, like, it's snowing like you would have snow for like five minutes. Mm-hmm. But it was Dumps, like yeah. snowing. Yeah. And it actually stuck to the, you know, the the cars. Um, it didn't really stick to the road. I mean, then by, you know, by now it's like 42 degrees already. But yeah, we got like snow. It was a pain because we had to go s- to swim meet this morning. But so other than that. It's like those big fat, like wet flakes kind of thing. Like Yeah. And then it yeah, turned into it ice for cold a little enough. bit. Yeah. yeah. And then it was rain. But yeah, it was a, a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, what were we even talking about? <laughs> uh, you, you, you guys kind of went break. through like five different things from Dollywood, I and I really couldn't keep up because I was still watching the the, uh, the Tinkerbell video, Big Bear coaster. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was I, a little was break actually, before food. I felt like, yeah, yeah. I was actually going to make a joke about um, a certain bear movie related to the coaster, but I figured this wasn't the certain bear movie. Oh, yeah, the new, the, the new one. Yeah, that movie. Oh, that movie. Yeah, yeah I we'll, we'll leave that the alone. Movie. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure some people will be able to figure out what we're talking about. <laughs> I just wish Dollywood had some sort of food festival as well. They might, but I've never been to it. That would be fun. Yeah, that'd be that'd be good to do. Yeah, I mean, I know there's some other parks like that, oh, like they have Dollywood a festival menu. So oh. that must be something. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's talk about food. We got a lot of food. I can't talk about food. I'm gonna have to bow out unceremoniously, ungracefully, whatever the case may be. Like, <laughs> I'm done. I can't do food. All right. So we've got we got a bunch of food stuff. We had carryover food from last week, and then what? Another one added because there was even more food stuff. Of course, because this, this never ending food. <laughs> I know. Although, should we even talk about the St. Patrick's Day one? Like, how limited time are these? I mean, th- this will be like this week, right? Yeah, or- it's just going to be March. Oh, no. Okay, no. Some They're doing 17th through the end of the month for some of them. All right. Okay. Okay. 
All right, we can talk about those then. Okay, well, so, let's do California Avenger. Let's go in order first. So, California okay, Avenger. Fine. What you wanted to start with St. Patrick's <laughs> no, no, Day? No, it, yeah, let's. No, we can come back to it. Let's let's okay. get through this one because this one's been sitting out longer than. Yeah, yeah. There's some good looking food in here though. No. Okay. Um. <laughs> Look at this bur- burrata thing: grilled uh, ciabatta with tomato and olive jam, burrata cheese, pesto, and freeze dried balsamic. It looks delicious. Like it looks picture. a little busy. <laughs> It looks. What do you mean? Look, oh, no, no, no. You, you're looking at. I think you're looking at something else, right? Is that? I'm looking at the thing in the upper right hand corner that looks like a. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at the one on the left. I thought that was. Yeah, I don't know what that one is compared to because the other one is. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know what that is. Is that like a? Oh, maybe that's like a bruschetta of some sort. Yeah, it looks like a bruschetta. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's similar, but. All right. Well, what about this Mickey Mouse macaron with with Snickers? Chocolate Mickey macaron filled with caramel ganache and uh, caramel ganache, I should say, or Sn- and Snickers cookie bar pieces. It looks really delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm it, I'm up for anything with Snickers in it. So, yeah, that that's that's an easy win for sure. And oh. and the fact that they're actually like making it Mickey Mouse shaped, like you know, that, this goes back to what we've been saying for so long that they need to make more things in Mickey Mouse shapes. Yeah, right. Like it's come on, guys. It's it's not hard. It's three circles. So. I still can't get over the the hard boiled eggs with Mickey Mouse in, uh, as the yolk inside. I like. I don't even know how. I still don't understand how they accomplish that centrifugal force. I know that that's the way, but I st- <laughs> like my mind does not fathom how they accomplish it with an individual egg. <laughs> right. I just don't understand it because <laughs> it looks so good. If you haven't seen that, if you're listening to me say this right now and you're just hearing this for the first time, please Google it because it is amazing and they need to do it in the, I mean, given like how many times do they have hard boiled eggs floating around the parks? Not that often, right? Like maybe I think they have them in some of like the, the, the hotels as like a snack or breakfast or whatever for people. But like, yeah. it's still, it's, it's incredibly cool. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. anyway, back to these other foods that don't look like mickey yeah that don't look um, like mickey the non-mickey uh you know things yeah so i'm uh yeah there's a whole bunch okay there's a whole bunch of wine stuff on here and i just don't do yeah I, wine, I'm, no we so. don't have to talk about the wine yeah. let's just talk about food because i know nothing about wine i can't drink wine uh, whatever that thing is that people are allergic to in wine, I'm allergic to that thing. Uh, if I drink wine, my face turns bright red and I get a headache. So I just don't drink wine. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, probably better that way. <laughs> no, it's, it, it definitely yeah. is. Um, so let's see here. All right. So um, I'm I've skipped past Berry Patch because Berry yeah. Patch doesn't again looks kind of boring. Uh, delish beef and barley poutine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not even regular fries it looks like it's uh it looks potato like bites yeah yeah, yeah it's <laughs> yeah it's potato barrels with braised beef short rib cheese curds stout gravy so they made a gravy from stout okay and lager micro sponge what is what a, is what is that i, I don't want to know actually <laughs> I, I i mean listen this looks good but the yeah. stuff on the top i thought was like fried onions or something that's like, what the is, micro sponge, apparently. <laughs> what is that? I wh- what? It, okay, someone tell us what this is because I just googled it, and the only thing I got was results for this particular dish. So like nobody's, yeah. I can't find an explanation of what this is. All, all I'm envisioning is somebody cut up a dish sponge and soaked it in beer. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a loofah that they cut up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah here you go. <laughs> Outside yeah. of that, though, it looks delicious, right? Like it does look good. Yeah, I just don't know what that thing is. Um. The Cubano slider looks good too. Slow roasted uh, mustard crusted pork, uh, sliced uh, ham, melted Swiss, pickle on a Hawaiian roll. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty straightforward, but delicious nonetheless. Yep. What is this hot dog? Uh, oh, what is um, this dog? An IPA sausage dog on, on a, a pretzel? soft pretzel roll. Ooh. Ooh. Cheddar cheese sauce. Ooh. Okay. Malt you got vinegar my- onion crunch. Ooh, yeah. You've got my attention with pretzel roll always. <laughs> do, do you do malt vinegar or yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I've been told I'm the, the strange one in my family because I like malt vinegar on my, my it chips. Is, it's a very regionally popular thing in the mm. States, I feel like. Like there are very there are certain areas that are all about about uh the 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 uh, malt vinegar. But yeah, see, I mean see, it's if fine. I'm having if I'm having like fish and chips, it's with malt vinegar. Like I'm not yeah. I, I don't want white vinegar on my fish yeah, and chips. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. 
Oh man, this cluck a doodle okay. moo. <laughs> okay. First we got smoked honey habanero chicken wings. Yeah. They look delicious in on that. Then mm-hmm. the barbecue beef brisket slider with smoked cheddar, dill pickles, and a pep and a salt and pepper brioche. That looks delicious. Oh yeah. <laughs> that I mean, looks and sounds yeah, those, delicious. Oh. Th- those are easy. Easy booths, yeah. So yeah, if you go to Cluck a Doodle Move, you know that's yeah. that's dinner for me. Yeah. <laughs> and then what is the, what is okay? This is then there's just drinks. Those two. I mean, th- listen, I'd yeah. be fine with those just those two things. Forget yeah, because remember the, these are like I mean the same as you get food and wine booths yeah. in Epcot. They're doing the same thing. So it's a lot of you know there's a lot of different um, alcoholic drinks which I'm fine to skip past. Um, I like this next booth is just called garlic kissed, <laughs> which listen, I don't know about you. I'm a huge garlic guy. Love. Yeah. Garlic. It's like, okay, here we go. <laughs> rarely a time where too much garlic. There's such a thing as too much garlic with me. Right. Yeah. So I'm just looking at the carbonara grilled Mac and uh, garlic Mac and cheese with uh peppered bacon. I mean, that's a win right there. I'm, I'm doing that immediately. <laughs> they don't show it, but there's no, they do. That. It's in the skillet, right? Is that not what's in the skillet? Yeah, no, there? no. The, the one before it, I'm talking the about before, the, the, yeah. the grilled top sirloin with roasted garlic, Greer smashed potatoes and black garlic chimichurri. Like, Ooh, yeah. you know, you're not kissing anyone after that, but it's going to be <laughs> delicious, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm a big like pesto guy too. And sometimes you get really garlicky pesto and it's just like, mm-hmm. Yeah. I I love that they have a whole garlic booth. That's that's amazing to me. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what this corn cake thing is, but it, I'm paletta or paletta. Oh, it's not a cake. Okay. So it's a it's an ice cream. It's like a it's like a um, it's like a frozen kind of thing. Yeah. Like an ice cream um, bar with corn. That's <laughs> that's what's weird about it. That's. Chili lime seasoning, corn crunch, and cilantro, but it's it's a crema. Yeah, it's a frozen ice pop, basically. That's the that's, word I was looking for before. That is weird, but I don't know if I would be against it. <laughs> like, it I feel like I, I'm I would, curious. I wouldn't like go out of my way to buy it, but if my wife got it and she was like, "Try this," I would be like, "All right, I'll try it," but I don't think I'd go out of my way to buy that. Then I think frozen- I would make my kid try it. You, make your kid, you just make him try it. <laughs> like, well, I, 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 you know, we we always, you know, frame stuff. You know, you got to try something once, right? I, yeah, I would yeah. buy it, and I, you know, I would I would try it, even if it was bad. I would still make my kid try it just for the reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I also, I'm not in on this roasted beet and goat cheese flatbread. I, the only thing I'm gonna like on that is the yeah. flatbread and the basil pesto. The rest of that, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't look very. I mean, there's. There's lots of flatbreads out there, and it's just kind of like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. It's, the other- it's not that I'm against it. It's just, you know, I, I'll save what I'm trying for things that aren't flatbread. Yeah, no, <laughs> for sure. I have to say, too, so the next booth is I Heart Artichokes. I don't mind artichokes, but I have to say they're not visually appealing. <laughs> like- so so I, I will say this. Um, so I, I used to work at a company, and they, they would bring in lunch, like, you know, a couple of times a month. And the caterer that they used, I feel they bought a giant drum of artichoke hearts and because they kept like they kept bringing up the, these sandwiches and every sandwich had artichoke hearts on it. And after I, I think it was a good year of that, um, I decided that I don't really like artichokes anymore. So, sure. Sure. yeah, this is kind of a this is a pass for me. This whole booth, I, you know, you know, good for you. You heart artichokes, but I'll keep walking. Yeah, I'm not a big artichoke fan, honestly. Yeah. Um, I don't know is if California is a huge producer of artichokes, and that's why they have this. But I'm all about this next this next uh, thing here, though. This is at LA style. Yeah, this glazed barbecue pork belly, and then some sort of mac and cheese kind of thing there. Oh, <laughs> furikake togarashi. Max yeah, thank out. you, thank you, thank you for <laughs> doing that. I don't know what that is, but it looks like mac and cheese. I, d- I don't know why they're calling it something weird, but it looks like mac and cheese to me. Um, but dude, does that look good? <laughs> it looks so good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm curious now. Um, I love I love pork belly too. I, I'm a big pork belly fan. So yeah, you would you would not like that mac and cheese because it, it actually it's seaweed with a bunch of other stuff. It looks like mac and cheese though. But but 
it, uh, it's it's got seaweed seaweed as a component. So I guess okay. if there's not a lot of seaweed, in it, I mean, if it just adds like a salty flavor to it, that's fine. Like I'm cool. Yeah, but well, you you may get like that salty, fishy, briny taste. Like like seaweed does that. Like you kind of you taste the ocean, right? <laughs> taste the ocean. Yeah, sounds like a sounds like a slogan for a commercial. Uh, you know, somewhere taste for, for seaweed. <laughs> for seaweed, taste the ocean. Yeah. Um. I just want to skip ahead because we have so many more to go through right, here. So yeah, like, let's let's see if there's anything else that like really catches our eye. Yeah, um, um, yeah, I'm not really seeing anything. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of like Ice Garden Grill is yeah. kind of eh. Okay, okay. What about this Black Forest ham grilled cheese, sourdough grilled cheese, Black Forest ham, smoked wats- mozzarella, red wine poached pear jam served with a sun dried tomato cheese sauce. Yeah, that's that. I'm eating that. I'm eating that for sure. Okay. I, I feel like I could get the same thing at Earl's Sandwich. So yeah, okay, but I'm still eating it. <laughs> oh, look, they did something different with the churro. They made a uh, 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 lemon raspberry pie churro. And it's in like a little like bun. Oh, that's thing. what that is. I I, I almost yeah. skipped past. That. I didn't realize that was a churro. A spiral churro with lemon Ooh. and marshmallow glaze and pie crust crumbles. All right. Yeah. I know you're just so tired of them doing weird stuff with, with just, churros. Like I, it's okay. Like it's a churro. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. All right. That's fair. All right. And and then right afterwards, there's a pineapple coconut churro and a tiramisu churro. Like that's a lot. Yeah. It's, that's a lot of churro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, um, next, let's go to the, let's go to the next foodie guide. I'm, I'm done right. with that yeah. one. I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good there. Um, women's history month. Yeah. Let's see if there's anything good in, in here. Um, and these are available throughout March, by the way. So all the way to the end of yes. March. I'm just scrolling through here, and these are back to Disney World. We're 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 trotting back to Disney World. Yep. Um. Um. Some. Uh. The I, I like the um the chocolate muse cake. The very the very first thing that one's which, pretty good. Yeah. 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 You know that they're kind of um you know playing off of Hercules. Yeah. Um, chocolate mousse, orange ginger panna cotta, sugar cookie chocolate glaze, and black currant whipped cream. Okay. No, sounds sounds interesting. Um, I don't know what this Grand Floridian thing is, but I want it. Um, <laughs> uh, I actually can't. I don't see where they even listed what gee, it is. Wait, what is? Oh, a gingerbread latte whoopie pie. Gingerbread whoopie pie filled with latte cream. All right, I like it. Okay. <laughs> what were I'm you trying to say? find? Th- there's a picture of a oh th- this tea time salad. I think it is. Okay. Oh, with the like the leaves in it, with like the yeah the weird leaves in it, yeah, yeah. So, so the leaves I think are actually cheese. So, like Holland they... infused goat cheese. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's that's like that. that's that's an interesting one. Uh, there's there's also over at uh, Port Orleans, there's a uh, wishing on stars mango mousse with coconut lime. I don't know how to say that word. Gili, gile. There's a little Chile. accent mark there. Chile, yeah. All right, Chile. coconut, <laughs> coconut glaze and decor fit for a princess. I don't really love most of those flavors except for the lime piece. I like a coconut flavor. I don't like coconut proper, but I like the flavor of coconut. Um, so yeah, this pork loin is whatever, and it's not really appealing to me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm not seeing a ton. I mean, this is a small amount of stuff, right? So like, it's yeah, just for a brief month period here, but. But what about it's still, uh, it's still good, you know, just to try something different. And and actually, you know, something to note is, uh, you know, you know, these these different recipes, um, a lot of them, it says that, you know, the, the different chefs that um, that were involved in creating them that were. Yeah. yeah so, so, you know, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of 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 um, women chefs that that were inspired and, and you know, either, you know, brought these um I feel like, you know, it's either, you know, something that they knew or, you know, they researched and, and, you know, they brought these to the, to the different restaurants. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's cool that um, you're seeing a little bit more of it. Like, I, I like knowing who went into making the food. You know, that kind of goes back to my, my joke, the last, <laughs> I said previously about, uh, you know, I felt like, you know, poutine, it's like people are going back and forth, just trying to make the most awful poutine ever but you know if they attach the chef to that that would uh, you feel better about it 
Well, th- then, I, then I would know who to be upset at. And yeah, you I just have a face to hate. Yeah, you'd have yeah. a face that you can, like, <laughs> when you're going into your blind rage, you just I mean, can I, imagine that person's I, face. Yeah. I, like I said, I, w- I wouldn't hate them. I would just be more disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm trying. I don't. I didn't really find anything else on here except for oh, uh, over at Jock Lindsay's hangar bar. Uh, notice home home style meatballs, handcrafted Italian meatballs, Sunday gravy, basil pesto, homemade lemon ricotta, grilled focaccia, grated pecorino romano. Yeah, that's that's that. Those those look delicious. Um, also, what is this chocolate bar thing? I don't. Is that the, the ganache? The Ahsoka pop at the ganache? Oh, it's coconut. Ugh. Plant-based <laughs> coconut and blueberry ganache enrobed in dark chocolate. Okay, well, if it's just a flavor of coconut, I guess I could deal with it. But I just don't. I don't like the texture of real coconut. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's got. But it's themed to Ahsoka as well, which you know I'll give them points for for that. <laughs> Throwing some theming in there, which is yeah. kind of random. I mean, a little random. I feel like for the ganache oh. to do that. I mean, no, not well for Ahsoka. Why? Why? It's like just it's, a, it's just a random property to throw in there that's all i'm saying I just, like what relationship does the ganache have to to to, to that character like well they, they've done other star wars related yeah chocolate yeah. stuff before that's true they have another one of those milkshakes that has a donut on top of it too mm-hmm. <laughs> right. yep. like let's stop with that one i don't get that one i i don't know i don't know why i'm complaining about having a donut with things but ooh, they have burrito tacos okay I'm I'm in on this beef mon- uh, Monterey Jack cheese, onion, cilantro, lime. That's over at Epcot at Sunshine Seasons. I haven't eaten at Sunshine Seasons in forever, and I feel like every time I go there, it's always like really good food, and there's always like a cool variety of stuff. You know, it's it's so hard because there's so many other places to eat, I and, and like we used to go to Sunshine Seasons a lot too, but it's like you kind of kind of forget about it because there's so many other places you want to eat in Epcot. <laughs> we, we, t- we always tended to like rope. Tr- we would rope drop Soren a lot back before, like they had the, the extra theater and you could like, you know, not wait that long. Um, so we would always rope drop Soren and then like grab some breakfast at sunshine seasons. Right. But like, we weren't, we were rarely likely to have lunch there, you know? Yeah. We were usually going elsewhere for lunch. So, but, but not because it's not good food. It's just because of where it is and the way our schedule would work, you know? Yeah. I, I totally get it. It's, yeah. uh, for us, you know, it's kind of the same thing. We, we forget about it or we have reservations at garden grill. So, well, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, okay. So okay. listen, uh, the, princess the, night, we, let's not talk about that. Cause they already happened. So, <laughs> oh, okay. never mind. <laughs> it happened I, March 7th and 9th. So they're already, already right. over. So we can skip that one. I think. Okay. Right? So, so we're back to, uh, St. Patrick's day, St. Patrick's day. Okay. Ooh, I hope goodness. you like green. Yeah. If you like green food coloring, this is a holiday, uh, for you and for, uh, for, for the food around Disney. So, but listen, and the, uh, of course, along with the green food coloring comes a lot of mint things as well. Yes. Uh, which <laughs> mint chocolate is like, I love mint. Chocolate. That's one of my favorite things. Like I yeah. like really good mint chocolate, anything pretty much. So great. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> um, agreed. So we've got, let's see, uh, a bunch of the resorts have a Irish cream cake with uh, mint ganache, buttercream, fondant rainbow, and a chocolate pot of gold. I'd say it looks really good. It's very, very cool looking. I mean, it's just a piece mm-hmm. of cake, but they like threw a cool rainbow on top and a cool pot of gold. So, all right. I'll, I'll admit, okay, my, my inner child, <laughs> my inner child wants to eat the top and leave the cake. Just really, just no cake at all. <laughs> yeah, just just eat, just eat the rainbow and the pot of gold. Eat, eat the rainbow and the icing and leave the cake. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with that that sentiment there. Uh, so, uh, do we really need to talk about a parfait? Eh, okay, it's a parfait. <laughs> Everybody likes parfait. <laughs> yeah, layers of green velvet cake, ganache, Irish cream, uh, cheesecake topped with sweet cream. And white chocolate shamrock decor. Okay, that sounds pretty good, actually. I, I take yeah. I take back what I said. That sounds I, delicious. I like that the green velvet cake, like <laughs> yeah, instead of red velvet cake. cake. Yeah. So 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 that's how you know it's not true red velvet or anything yeah. because red velvet's actually caused by a chemical reaction. It's not dye put into the cake. Yes. So so they're making a velvet cake, but it's and then they're dyeing it green. Yeah, pretty much. So, the more you know. The more you know, it's right. Uh, 
Uh, the Mickey Shamrock milkshake, which is a mint milkshake with chocolate drizzle, shamrock sprinkles, and a specialty vanilla cupcake. Again, we're throwing cupcakes on top of the milkshakes, but I'm yep. okay with it. It's on this one. I It looks delicious and sounds delicious. This is really a, a, a great yeah. holiday for you if you like mint chocolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Th- just... This mint chocolate chip cheesecake, it, oh, yeah. mint chocolate brownie topped with vanilla cheesecake, whipped mint ganache, and house-made chocolate decor. Like, that's... Yeah, it looks yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, by the way, some of this stuff is only available to uh, until uh, St. Patrick's Day, which is, uh, I guess, is it March 17th? Is that why it all ends on March 17th? Yes. I feel like I should know this, um, but I don't. Uh, yeah, so some of this stuff is just available this week if you're hearing our voice. So please, uh, you know, go get these things now if you're at Disney. Uh, great time to to try some of these things. Um, I see another cheesecake. They also have, oh, they have a Mickey shaped. Oh, look, Mickey shaped. Well, that's their beignets. Mm-hmm. It's Mickey shaped. Okay, that's not a new thing. So, uh, Mickey shaped, uh, shamrock, uh, be- beignet, which is, uh, Mickey shaped beignet, chocolate mint ganache, milkshake pipette, and shamrock decor. So you actually like squeeze Inject. the milkshake into it. Yeah. Yeah. They usually do that with like, uh, they have alcoholic ones that you can do that with, but this is just milkshake. So. Well, and you would want to do this because otherwise the uh, beignet would become mushy if you if yeah. they pre-did it. So, yeah, you know, they, they want to make sure that you get the flavor without just having a pile of mush in the bottom of the container. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. What is what is this one? I think I skipped over this. What is this? Uh, Lucky Leprechaun? Is that the one? Whiskey, coffee, custard, whiskey, soaked cake, and pistachio mousse topped with dark chocolate shamrock. Is that the one? That looks like a leaning tower. <laughs> Is that? I thought that was the mint chocolate cheesecake. Oh, maybe. I don't Where know. Did you see Lucky Leprechaun? I'm looking uh, at there's it's it's a, a right above Contemporary Resort. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that's what that is. Yeah. All right. What else we got here? You seeing anything else right. good? Um. Hmm. What is this off green? It looks like mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, car- uh, caramel, caramel hazelnut. hazelnut profiteroles. Yeah. A word I actually knew how to say, but <laughs> caramel hazelnut uh, custard filled chocolate prof- profiteroles with uh, with chocolate ganache. That, I mean, that sounds good. They don't so, look particularly appetizing, but I mean, yeah. it sounds amazing. <laughs> so, so that's the funny thing. You know, we just finished talking about, you know, green dye just, you know, is not great. But this is what happens when you don't use green dye or it's a little more natural is that it yeah. comes out almost looking like I, I i've seen mushrooms that look this color and i don't you know i don't know if they're actually edible mushrooms so. by the way that's at riviera at the at yeah. the cafe there only available on saint patrick's day yeah so um darn if you missed it yep yep so mickey's pot of gold stout chocolate cake filled with irish cream this is my holiday man this i literally <laughs> i would eat every single thing on this page um <laughs> like the, the question is is how how drunk are you getting eating all these i'm sure you know, they burn the alcohol off of the beer and irish, irish cream food. filled yeah <laughs> they, they get rid of that um yeah. you know that's that's yeah <laughs> Roaring Fork always has good stuff too. So they have yep. uh, the a vanilla bean mousse, Irish stout cake, and salted caramel ganache. I'm assuming that's I don't know if that's pictured. It's here. the one. It's the one that says Lucky on it. Is I that think. is it that one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's the nugget. It's 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 a gold nugget. Right? Oh yeah 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 you're right. Yeah. They yeah. Roaring uh, Fork always has really cool like cupcakes and stuff like that. You know, and, yeah. and different different things. So I love Roaring Fork. It's one of my one of my favorite quick serves in the re- rest of the resorts. What were you just going to say, Trevor? You, you had one? No, I, I was just saying. You know, ha huh, theming, right? Yeah, you know, theming. Yes. Uh, <laughs> sunshine season. Se- se- <laughs> sunshine season. So we were getting to the, that point now where we're starting to lose it. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so we should wrap it up soon. But um, Sunshine Seasons has this uh, St. Patrick's Day Irish coffee tart, which I don't like coffee, but I think I'd still like this. Chocolate coffee tart uh, with mint mousse, Irish coffee. I don't know how to say that. And shamrock garnish. It looks delicious. <laughs> yeah. It, and, you know, it's whenever you get dark chocolate in there, especially, right? Like, you, you, I, I know you're saying like the coffee can be overpowering, but I feel like, you know, with the mint and everything, that's that's going to be good. Like, yeah. y- you don't need a lot of it either. That's that's the thing. Yeah, like, yeah, I agree. I, I would not eat like a big slab of this, but this looks like a good tart. 
<laughs> yeah, and now now we're getting though down to uh, so Amarats of course has an amazing petite cake this, like they always do. Yeah, this petite cake. Oh my goodness, it looks yeah. so good. Decorations on it is like, whiskey soaked spice chiffon cake with layers of Irish cream mousse, caramel banana mousse, and candied walnuts. But it just it looks amazing as a pot of gold with a rainbow. It just awesome your, looking your teeth will be rainbow after you bite into it <laughs> yeah for <laughs> sure down to some savory though city works irish loaded yep. fries house-made corned beef hard smoked bacon guinness braised onions ipa cheese sauce green onions and waffle fries i mean that just has my name written all over yeah it, and you see they're <laughs> not they're not selling it as poutine they are like, not selling it as poutine I, I, and i know there's no gravy or cheese curd but they're like they're people would try and sell this as poutine and they're not. So, you know, props to them for saying, yes, these are loaded fries and they do look really good. I would be probably getting an order of these along with you. <laughs> Speaking of that, the daily poutine has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Irish pork bangers, poutine, Irish cheddar, onion, marmalade, stout gravy, and French fries, which I don't think it's pictured anywhere here. No. Um, but, Cause yeah, cause yeah the, this Dublin burger though. Oh my goodness. I think it's a, lot. a tower <laughs> how do you even eat that how do you like it's it's huge it's two patties irish cheddar corned beef fries i mean uh, fries uh, fried onions barbecue sauce lettuce and tomato but it's it looks like it's way larger i don't know how people eat burgers that large i just don't i don't get it if you want to be chaotic you eat it like corn on the cob <laughs> wow that would be a weird way to eat it okay <laughs> Just turn it sideways and yeah. you know bite in. You're right. you're good. <laughs> um, the ganachery has its usual pinata, which you know it's pretty yeah. muted. It's just a pinata with a little little leprechaun hat on the top. So mm-hmm. if you want to s- smash some chocolate, go right ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay, so there's an Irish. Oh wait, swirls on the water, which is usually your place at Disney Springs to get yourself some uh, some Dole Whip. We'll have a chocolate and mint soft serve. Uh, in a black vanilla cone topped with sprinkles. That looks good. Yep. Um, is this okay? This must be at sprinkles. So, so one thing, um, right above that picture, Mm. um, there's an Irish coffee cupcake. So it's a coffee, coffee cupcake filled with marshmallow topped with Irish whiskey, green vanilla, buttercream fish with a clover decor. One thing that I like about this is that they're actually showing the, um, the inside, the, yeah, they've yeah. sliced it so you can like see what's in the cupcake, which that's actually selling me more than a lot of these other pictures. Fair, fair. Yeah. Also need to mention too that that cupcake has a disclaimer. It looks like you actually have to show your ID to get this cupcake uh, because it contains alcohol. And so yep. they don't burn the alcohol off on this one. So they said this cupcake is only for adults uh, 21 plus because it contains alcohol. So I'm an adult 21 plus. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> some days, maybe not. Some days, but, yeah, yeah. Some days. Yeah. Other, other times, not so much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see what else we got here. Any, anything else? Oh, we've got some uh, Disneyland stuff. This is a cool looking. Lots. Yeah. Everything is, uh, Oh, they've got the green stuff. Ha. I, I, yeah. At the red roast. Uh, yeah. Is, they do that a lot at Disneyland and not so much at Disney World where they're yeah, constantly it, changing the gray stuff to other stuff. But it, it is mint flavored. So, so you get some mint flavored mousse with mint chocolate on, chips. I think they get a deal on mint flavoring during this time. Like, just, right. get, I, I, I'm just imagining like a, like one of those, uh, you know, milk trucks, you know, that they are like, you know, just pull it <laughs> just into, mint. <laughs> yeah, just pull it into Disney World to just got the mint shipment here, <laughs> fill it up some barrels of mint. I mean, can you, can you imagine how like how clear your sinuses would be though if you were unloading that kind of mint? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. got the mint extract uh, back here. <laughs> you didn't It'll- hail once, and you'd be able to breathe clearly for the next three years. Seriously, yeah, yeah. All right, well, nothing else on here is really jumping out to me. I think we could probably wrap up unless there's any yep. other thing you want to mention here. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm good. All right, wrap us up, Trevor. All right. Um, so as usual, if you guys want to find us, you can always reach out to us at welcome home podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you know, any, anything you want to send us, uh, you know, share your trip reports, uh, listener questions, all that kind of stuff. We, we love hearing from you guys. Uh, so, so keep that coming. And, um, if you want to follow us on social media, you can find us on Facebook as welcome home podcast. Uh, you can find our YouTube channel, which is also Welcome Home Podcast, or our Instagram, Welcome Home Picks. Um, for YouTube and Instagram, those are 
great places whenever we do live streams or um or we go to the parks you'll be able to keep up with what we're doing uh on facebook also look for our group the welcome home disney waitlist which is uh you know a, a great facebook group to come and talk with other uh listeners of the show and just generally really good disney experts um because we're not experts by any means but uh we we have a lot of fantastic listeners that uh you know, love to share their own story, share advice. You know, people ask for help on their trips all the time for planning and stuff like that. So, you know, it's it's a good place to to come in and uh, talk with other Disney fans. If you would like to help support the show, go to store.welcomehomepodcast.com and have a look at our merchandise. Uh, we got things, you know, from T-shirts to uh, mugs and fanny packs and um uh, you know, a good selection of stuff there and all of it goes back towards helping us just continue to uh, produce the show and, uh, you know, do stuff like uh, shirt designs and whatnot. And uh, if you would rather support us on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash welcome home pod and check out our different levels of support there, which have exclusive um, rewards that you can't get on the the store. And uh um, Patreon supporters also get access to the Discord server, which is yet another platform where we like talking with our listeners, and we have lots of lots of great conversations there as well. That uh, um, you know, we'll come back into our episodes, and you know, just um, again more more Disney experts for um, if, if that if that's what you're looking for, I guess you know if if you want more if you want more Disney experts in our life, come hang out with our group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just don't expect it from us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't expect best. it from us. Yeah, yeah. We try our best, but we're <laughs> yeah. we're never right all the time. So yeah. And and last but not least, if you are listening on iTunes or Spotify, um, we would appreciate if you leave us a five star review because it does help more people find the show. And uh, if uh, if you're on iTunes and you want to leave us a written review, we would appreciate that. We love hearing feedback, and you know sometimes people <laughs> write some really interesting stuff in there too. So. Um, is, is there any new ones this week, Tom? I don't know if I saw Fortunately, any. Fortunately, we do not have any new ones at the moment now. Okay. But yeah, that's okay. <laughs> All good. Yeah. But, I mean, we, you yeah. You know, they, they don't come in every week. So no. Yeah. Uh, but also don't forget to subscribe to welcome home podcast. So you can be reminded every time you release a new episode, you can find us on Google podcasts, Amazon, Pod- Amazon podcasts. What am I talking about today? I swear. Ooh, new platform. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they have <laughs> Amazon music has podcasts, right? Yes. So, Oh gosh. Um, let's try that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, just about any podcast app out there. You can find our show. Just search for Welcome Home. Look for the Disney one, of course. Uh, just a reminder to our listeners, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment, entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company. As such, all opinions we express on the show are our own. So please consult a DVC cast member or a Disney cast member for more information about anything we talked about today. Huge thank you to, uh, well, first of all, to Danny for coming on the show today to announce uh, that really cool program that DVC Resale Market's doing, but also to uh, Monero Financial for sponsoring the episode and, of course, World of DVC for all of their their support of the show. Uh, Join us next time for more Disney Parks discussion. Of course, more DVC talk. We hope to you all real soon. This is Skipper Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. When we hit a chair, how she can cuddle is not.